Yeah, it completely changed. So uh, as people know, like uh, we need to fast from like maybe 4 a.m. or something until like uh, because now I'm in the U.S. So it's it's different a bit. Like we start fasting by 4 a.m. and then we break our fast by 7:30, 8 p.m. So uh, it's not like a short period. Like it's <laughs> long, but uh, actually it's one even though it's very exhausting in a way when people think about it in terms of training and uh, uh, it completely changes your day, but it's one of the most exciting time of the year for us. Uh, it's one of the times where we, we are really looking forward to, to have Ramadan. And uh, I mean, me and my husband, we really, really appreciate uh, that time of the year. And uh, we try as much as possible to keep the same traditions and the same religious, like, um, uh, aspects of it uh, because it's not only about fasting people like they just think about Ramadan that it's only about fasting but actually it brings you closer to God uh, that's when you you try to slow down and think more and uh, think about your faith and uh, uh, yeah as I told you like get closer and uh, pray uh, just keep on praying and uh, yeah I, I think it's and especially this year, actually, uh, I really, um, if it wasn't the British, I wouldn't have loved to miss these days, like, because it's just 30 days a year and uh, you really think it's like an, an, an occasion that you, could, you couldn't miss. So, um, yeah. <laughs> obviously, you can't eat or drink from, let's say, four in the morning up until sunset. And obviously, sunset is different from one place to another. To another in Egypt, it's about six thirty at the time. Here, it's about in England, it's about eight p.m. Uh, so you wait until the very last minute where you can still keep eating and, and chugging in the water to uh, to get as much fluid in as possible. Uh, and then you go to bed around four thirty or five in the morning, and then you get up around one or noon. Depends. You try to get your seven eight hours of sleep. And then uh, in non-tournament days, I go to either one or two training sessions before uh, breaking my fast, which is usually one because two is too much. Uh, you get a little too dehydrated. The quality of the, of the session goes down. Uh, and then after uh, you break your fast, uh, you break your fast around 6.30, as I said, at home. Uh, I, try, I still try to get three meals in. So one at 6.30, I go for a session around 9, uh, 9 p.m. Uh, maybe even 10 sometimes and then I go back and I have uh, another meal at, at uh, midnight and then before I can uh, I can I should stop eating I have another one at let's say 3 in the morning yeah so I, I try to to stay as healthy as possible try to get as much uh, uh, food as I would in any other day but obviously in different timings and and it's like intermittent fasting if you may yeah, obviously you can drink during the the, the fasting but um, uh, but, uh, you know, in a way, I love the month. It's a month of gatherings in Egypt. You're always together. And as I said yesterday, it's a month where you really discipline yourself from all appetites, really, not just eating and drinking, but any, uh, any wrong appetites you might have. And not just wrong, but any appetites you might have. You just you try to, uh, to uh, what the, what's the word, like uh, navigate your, uh, your, your look to, towards God and, and, and just uh, pray for him as much as possible and, and, and try to be a better person really. And, and, it, and it really drags on after Ramadan. It makes you a better person in my opinion. And uh, so it's, it's, it's a brilliant month. Uh, I love it. It's tough uh, for, an, for an athlete, but it's, uh, if I am to pick, I would want this month every year of, the, of, of, my, of my life. Yeah. Yeah, so my daily routine uh, is completely different. Uh, in terms of training, obviously, as well. Uh, but let's take it from the morning. So usually, uh, I, I train probably once or twice uh, before I break my fast. But it would be later sessions, maybe by like 2 or 3, and then another one by 6 or something. And then I would break my fast at 7.30. So we eat together with my husband. We pray first, and then we eat. And then we would go to the mosque, uh, pray. So thankfully, the mosque in, uh, where we live is like three minutes away. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, a, it's a huge thing. It's, uh, we're very thankful for that. <laughs> and then we go back. Uh, and actually, Ramadan as well, it's, not, it's, it's about religion first. And it's about getting closer to God. But it's also about spending more time with family, gathering more. So we have 
couple of friends in the US, we try to gather, uh, eat together, uh, socialize a bit, and then you get back to praying as well, reading Quran, and then it's like a few hours later, like maybe at 3 or 4 a.m., you have your last meal, you go to sleep, and then you wake up maybe by, I wake up, my husband wakes up earlier because he has stuff to, to, to finish, but I usually wake up like by noon or something. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I try as much as possible to keep it the same as it was in Ramadan. So if, if, there is a, uh, if there is not a tournament coming up, then it, was be more, it would be more endurance stuff, long sessions, trying to get the work in. If, it's, if the tournament is approaching, then it's more sharpening explosive stuff uh, on court and off court. So uh, before I got here, actually, we were playing the Nationals at home. Uh, so I had to play uh, a couple of, uh, of, of very good young players in the first two rounds. And then I played Abul Ghar in the quarters, Mossad in the semis, and Tariq in the final, which was a great preparation for the British Open. Uh, and, and, and same again, you know, uh, uh, if, it, there weren't for, if it wasn't for the tournament, I would have been playing matches to sharpen up for this. So I, I, I try not to change, change it up much, to be honest. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very hard in a way because it's not only about the eating pattern, but it's also about the sleeping pattern. And matches obviously are uh, like in the morning, in the evening, sometimes in the afternoon. <laughs> like, and uh, it, it, obviously it's hard. It's, it's very hard. Uh, I had to talk to my nutritionist, my, my whole team, like my coach as well. And it's like a try and error thing. You try, like in Egypt, uh, I would say because when I used to live in Egypt, it's a bit easier because everyone is doing it. So um, every, like you, you could find partners that can hit with you like in the evening, like at 10 p.m., 11 p.m., no problem. But in the U.S., no one really does it. Like six, everyone is in bed. Like <laughs> when I tell someone to hit at six, they're like, oh, that's late. But <laughs> But then you just try to, to fit as much as possible. And as I was telling you, prior, uh, like priorities change a bit. Like for me during Ramadan, it's more about, okay, that's one month a year. Uh, I have to focus on this month. And, uh, and then I'll do my best in order to train and uh, be ready for the British or for another tournament. But I think in life in general, you have priorities and uh, I think it's all about finding what's the priority right now. So, yeah. <laughs> Believe me, it sounds hard from the outside, but from the inside, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, how you discipline yourself, how you see nothing but God uh, during this month, and, and how you see that the, the, whether it be the Quran or any, any book that has come down from, from, from God is, is really done or made for you to be a better person. It's not made for you to be a, a more upset or, a, or more fatigued or it's all for your own sake. And, and that increases uh, this faith in you during Ramadan when you're doing it. And you see how much better people are and how much uh, at peace you are with yourself during Ramadan. And, and it really lights a bulb in your head. Oh, this is actually good for us. This is uh, what we're here in, in, in the world for. So I, I absolutely love the month. Um, and uh, yeah, I, um, I look forward to it every year. Obviously, because um, as I was telling you, like uh, during the whole year, you still pray and everything, but you don't uh, pray for like two, three hours in the mosque. Everyone is doing it. Um, so it makes you like the, the slow down, reflect. Uh, you know what they do, like meditating. That's a kind of meditating in a way and thinking about, uh, and then it, it's something that it does for you as well. It makes you more calm in a way because sometimes you stress out on small things and then when you think about the bigger picture, you think, oh, actually it's very small. Why am I like stressing on these kind of things? Why am I angry at this person? It's, it's very little, it's very small compared to the bigger picture, compared to uh, the good that you want to do in life. The, so I just think, it's a very good moment to just uh, slow down, reflect, um, having more time to spend and getting closer to God. So, yeah, it's, it's just something they cannook miss, I think. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mark.